going on in all of our own backyards. But we live in a society that likes to look the other way, pretend it's not going on, when I guarantee every single one of you in this room knows somebody that has been sexually abused. You may just not know it, because there is so much shame and stigma placed on survivors of sexual abuse. So much shame and stigma that often that five, seven, nine-year-old that's being sexually abused tonight will keep it a secret until she's in her 30s, 40s, 50s, because she's only getting one message, and that message is from her perpetrator. This is our little secret. No one will believe you. I'll come hurt you. Not getting that other message, speak up, tell. Tell somebody this is going on. I went off to kindergarten and soon got into Daisy Scouts. And that's where I met my very best friend. Her name was Ashley. Ashley and I began doing everything together, from birthday parties. She's coming to my house, I'm going to hers. But I noticed something about Ashley's life that was different from mine. You see, Ashley came from a broken home. She never had a dad in the picture. Her mom was a single mom working to make ends meet for her two young children. So anytime I was at Ashley's house, her mom was never around. It was always only an uncle that lived in the home. And it was this uncle, whenever I played over there, that was always sleeping. And I never understood why. Here he was supposed to be the caretaker, and we're out playing in their court, playing in the backyards. He never had his eye on us. I would describe him as a very neglectful caretaker. Well, one particular night, my very first sleepover, I was spending the night at Ashley's. Well, I was excited, of course, my parents sending me off, wondering, am I going to be okay being on my own for the first night? Of course, I was all excited. Going over to Ashley's house, she had the big doll house I loved to play with. So when I got to Ashley's house that night, we watched a Disney movie, played with her doll house. She eventually climbed in her bed, and I got in my sleeping bag on the ground. Well, as I'm sitting there sleeping, I'm a very light sleeper, still am to this day. I heard the bedroom door open. Well, I didn't think much of it, but I looked, and I saw her uncle standing there. Well, I assumed that he was just checking to make sure we were both in there asleep, just like my parents had done so many times with my sister and I. But that wasn't the case. He came in, locked the door, and every single one of you knows where this story is going. This man got down to where I was, pulled down my little sleeping bag, and for the very first time in my life, sexually abused me. It happened so quick. I didn't know how to put words to what he had just done. I had never been taught this. So I stayed silent about it when my mother came in to pick me up the next day. I didn't tell her a thing. But the next time Ashley asked me to spend the night, of course, I'm saying no, no way. But I didn't tell my best friend what her uncle had done. I soon was asking her always to sleep over at my house. But I continued to play with Ashley. And that wasn't the end of the abuse with this man. I would go over there and play once again, another overnight, a year later, her begging me to spend the night. And of course, once again, I did, thinking not much of it. Once again, this man came into the room, brought me now into his bedroom, and sexually abused me. Once again, I'm keeping it a secret, because this man is telling me, I'll come get you if you tell anyone. I know where you live, Aaron. Well, he did know where I lived. He had dropped my best friend off at my house numerous times. I could walk to their house. So often, I walked up and down that sidewalk or rode my bike to her home. So as I continued to stay silent, the warning signs all began to go up. Something is wrong with this kid. The behavior problems began, started acting out in school, but no one was asking those important questions. So I continued to stay silent. Well, then in first grade, like any other day, Ashley had asked me to come over and play. Well, I had gone over there numerous times because it was safe during the day. Nothing bad ever happened during the day. It was only at night when I spent the night. So this particular day, it's a cold January day, I'm playing with the dollhouse in her bedroom. Ashley gets up to go to the bathroom, sitting there playing. I heard her come back into the room, and I asked her a question. Well, I couldn't see the door. 
So when she didn't respond to me, I kind of peeked my head over the door, and standing against that closed door was that uncle of hers. I'll never forget that moment, going from sudden joy to now clutching these Barbie dolls, because I know what this man is about to do. Soon my best friend is at the door, thinking I locked her out, and I start screaming for her. She finally knows now something's going on. Little did I know she was keeping the same secrets. As I'm sitting there screaming for my best friend, I'm struggling now on a bed with this man, fighting, kicking, screaming. Him putting his hand over my mouth, telling me that if I did not shut up, he was going to tie me to her bed. Imagine this for a moment. Not even seven years old, weeks shy of my seventh birthday, and this man is doing this to this innocent young child that I was. Well, this man proceeded to pull down my pants and, for the very first time, rape me. I can remember that moment as if it happened yesterday. I couldn't tell you what I ate for breakfast yesterday, but I can describe horror that happened more than 21 years ago. From the closet doors being opened, the colored dresses in her closet, from the toys on the floor, to the color shirt this man was wearing, to the evil look that I saw in this man's eyes.